In this video, you'll learn everything you need to know about using notation and scoring MIDI inside Logic Pro X. Now, this is a pretty long tutorial, so don't feel like you need to watch it all now. I've also included some timestamps in the description so you can come back and reference different parts of it later. And before we dive in, I just wanna share with you our free Logic Pro X cheat sheet. It's completely free, and inside you have my favorite keyboard shortcuts so you can save time while you're working, also some information and tips for the different stock plugins that come with Logic, as well as some recommended starter settings. So it's just a really useful PDF to have if you're a Logic Pro X user. So either head to the link on screen now or the link in the bio to get access. Okay, let's do this. In this section, you'll learn all about working with notation in Logic. We're gonna talk about graphical input versus step input. We're gonna go over transcribing, and this is gonna be an introduction to the notation engine. There are some more advanced features that are beyond the scope of this course, but using everything you're gonna learn over the next few lessons, you'll be able to write notation, you'll be able to turn your MIDI performances into a notation and transcribe them. And you'll also be able to create notation quickly and efficiently using a few different methods. So here I've got a brand new project, and what we're gonna do first of all is just create a software instrument. And for now, let's just use a Steinway Grand Piano. Let's have a listen. Cool. So once you've got a instrument sorted, the next step is gonna to be to create a new template. And to do that, we're gonna, first of all, make a new screen set. So we're gonna press two to go to screen set two, and then we're gonna close this window. First of all, let's open the score editor, and then we'll close this window then we're also going to open the piano roll and just reshape them so that they're this kind of layout with the score editor on top and the piano roll underneath. Now we can lock this screen set and save this as a project template. So let's say notation. Great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to press one to go back to screen set one, which was just the track view here. And we're going to add an empty MIDI region. So let's right click, create empty MIDI region. And let's make this really big. So let's zoom out. And you only have to do this if you're going from scratch. If you already have a performance or a MIDI region that you're working with, you won't have to do this. But if you're doing notation from scratch and you're actually composing with notation, you'll have to do this first so that you've got something to work with. Cool, so now we can go back to screen set two. And now we can see all of the notation. Now let's make that even bigger, just so we've got a lot to work with. Now there's a few different views here. So first of all, this is the area where we're seeing the notation, whereas down here is the piano roll, and this is where we can just see the actual MIDI data. Whereas this is the MIDI data, but displayed as a score. And up the top here, we've got a few different view options. So the first one is this one where it's kind of a, a continuous linear view, and we can always see the time signature and the key signature, and we can scroll horizontally like so. In this view, it's more like a traditional score, and it's laid out vertically. And then in this view, this is our kind of final paper score where it's laid out as if it was in pages. So the one that you use to compose is up to you. They're all the same, it's just slightly different layouts. Now down the left here, we've got a few different windows as well. And the important one is this part box window. Now we can filter out different views by turning on or off these boxes up here. So if we want to turn key signatures on or off, we can turn that on and time signatures there. And now everything is displayed here, all of our different notation symbols. Or we could just have, for example, all, and that's everything displayed. And then we can skip to them. We can reorder them here. So you can play around with that and different views. Or if you click this drop-down box here, you can actually go to sets that have already been created. So text and lyrics or notes and rests. And we can actually customize these and if we click on or off of one of them like so we can then create new sets and call it what we want rob's set and i can turn things on or off like so and there we go so play around with those filter views you'll get to know all of these i'm not going to actually teach what any of these are because this is more about notation within logic not general music theory but you'll get the gist of it so use the quick sets or create your own sets to view these. Now, what you actually do with these is input them onto the score. And there's a few ways you can do that. The first way is to use the pencil tool. 
So we've got the pencil set as our secondary tool here. You might prefer it the other way around. Pencil is primary and pointer is secondary. Now whatever we have selected here is what the pencil will be. So there we've got a crotchet. So if I draw here, it adds a crotchet. Like so. And then we can use the pointer tool to move this around. Move it up and down to change the note, move it sideways to change the position in the bar, etc. And then of course if I selected something else like a key signature, like 6-8, I can then draw that in here by just adding it there and it adds 6-8 and then if I wanted to change to 3-4 in this bar, I can just draw it in there, 3-4 and then maybe back to 4-4 four, four here. So whatever you have selected in the part box is what your pencil tool will create. Now another way of doing it is to actually just drag these. So I can just drag it from there, I can grab um, a semi breathe add it there, I can then grab a minim, add it there, etc. Now if you grab the title and then move this over here, you've got it as a separate window and this makes it even easier to click and drag if that's the way that you like to work. So I can then just drag these, whatever, I'm, whatever I want to use, like so. So that's the basic way that you enter information by either dragging or using the pencil tool. Now you might have also noticed that at the moment we're adding accidentals and we're not staying in the key signature. So if I change this here to a D major, you can see all these accidentals here. Now I can drag them like so, but you'll hear it's doing it in semitones. It's not staying in the key. Now if you want to compose diatonically within the key, you can go to edit and diatonic insert. And what this means is now we can only add notes within the key. So if I get rid of that, because that was an old one, but if I add a new note now, you can hear now it's only within the key. It's only when I drag it that I can change it to an accidental, like so. But when I insert, I can only add diatonically. So that's a really handy little feature that stops you composing with accidentals if you're not in that kind of style. When you're adding notes and composing here, you'll notice that of course we've got oral feedback and as I move a note up or down, I can hear it. Now if you want to turn that off, you could hit this button up here to turn off the MIDI output. And what this means now is I can move these around without doing anything, but when I play, I can still hear it. Whereas if I turn that on, it's giving me instant oral feedback. So you can turn on or off the MIDI out button up there if you want to hear that. Now you can use the pointer tool to highlight several by clicking and dragging, and then I can move them up uh, by dragging. I can move them sideways. Uh, I can press delete to delete them. And the same with these time signatures. Oh, I might have to actually delete them manually. So if I go to 6, 8. And now we're back to normal. So you can just click on notes or you can drag and highlight them if you want to delete them. So now let's add a few notes back in and let's actually create a chord this time. So we go, nice chord. And what we can do now is we can highlight all of this by holding Command. And then we can actually copy this. So we can either hold Alt and drag it like this. Or we can press Command C to copy it. And then we can add our playhead there and press Command V and that'll paste it. Like so, and then if we want, we can move individual notes. Like that. If you want to change the length of these notes, we can highlight them, and we can do one at a time or several like this. And in this event box here, it tells us how many notes we have selected, and then we can see length. So we can either just click this and drag it, and that allows us to make them shorter, like so, or longer, like so. 
Or we could actually double click here and manually input how long we wanted them to be. Like that. Now another good feature is if you go to view, duration bars, selected notes. Now what I can do is with the pointer tool, I can drag the length like this. To the full length of the bar and make them shorter. If you want to edit the actual size or the, the other attributes of the, the notation, you can just double click on it with the pointer tool. And then we get a window here of note attributes. So I can make the size larger like this. And that makes the size bigger or I can uh, change the stem direction to change the stem like that. And there's a few other handy attributes in there that you might want to play around with. So that's it for graphic input. And that's the way that most people would work. But in the next lesson, you're going to learn also about step input. Sometimes entering notation used the graphic input method can be a bit slow, especially if you're composing from scratch. So there's another input method called step input that is usually quicker. So if we press enter to return to the beginning here, I'm then going to go to window and then show step input keyboard, or you can do Alt Command K. And now we can see this keyboard here that we can just click on the notes like so, and it will add a note. And the distance of the note is dictated by what we have selected here. As is the uh, dynamic and the voicing. Now you'll notice at the moment it's adding them all as one chord, and that's because we're currently in chord mode. As soon as we come out of chord mode, it will start a new note for every time you hit a different note. So when you want to write chords, you then go into chord mode, add your chords, and then come out of chord mode to continue, like so. Now you can also use the keyboard here. You can also use a MIDI device. You just need to make sure that the MIDI in button is turned on. And now I've got a MIDI keyboard here. So that can speed things up a lot. So you can use either method. But just remember that this is normally a quicker way to compose. And of course, you can then still go and delete them and edit them afterwards using the graphical input, like so. A lot of the time when you're working with notation, you'll probably be working with text as well to add musical directions and various other text instructions. So you go to text and lyrics, or you can just go to this box here. And now we can see all these different types of text. So we can just drag this wherever we want and it will pin it to the beginning of the bar. And then this might be a general direction like Andante, which I've spelled wrong. Let's try it again. There we go. And now this is pinned to that bar. What we can also do is go to functions, text attributes, and fonts. And then we can actually change the font of this. I can change it to chancery, make it a bit bigger, like that. Something else that can speed up the workflow a bit when you're using text are text styles. So if we go to layout, text styles, and here we can see all the different styles that we could have. So bar numbers, page numbers, note heads, instrument names, etc. And we can change the fonts of these. So we might want that to be something like that, monotype, Casanova. And then tempo symbols, like Andante, we can make that as well, make it a bit bigger. And you can play around with all of these. And you can even add your own. So I could now be, I could say chords. And I could change the font of that. And then when you go to this text and go to the event window, you can see the style drop down box. And I can simply click on here, change the style. So there's chords, which I just added. But if I want this to be uh, tempo markings, and there we go, it's changed it to that font, made it bigger. And now all of my text styles will be the same and it will be consistent across the score. In this lesson, you'll learn how to transcribe a pre-existing MIDI performance into notation. And this is a really great feature because if you've composed something within Logic and you played most of it in live using a MIDI device or by writing it in using the piano roll, you can now turn it into a score that you can hand to other players, that you can share online so that people can play your music and however else you want to use the notation. 
So this is just really simple. Most of it's one notes, there aren't any chords. But you can see here, this was just recorded in using a MIDI device. So if I go to screen set two, which is where we've got all of our notation windows, we can see already that it's pretty much already done it very accurately. I made sure it was all crotchet, so it's nice and simple. And the only bit I can see here is that it's kind of got a bit confused. So we'll look at that in a second. Now, anything that you change in this region window here only affects the notation, not the original MIDI. So when you see this quantize function, this isn't going to affect the original performance. It's not quantizing the MIDI data. It's purely quantizing the score. So if I change this to four, it's going to quantize everything to crotchets. Or if I change it to eight, it's going to quantize everything to quavers. And I can go further down like that, where I can get to 128. And that's when it starts to get a bit bizarre because here it's not quantizing it at all. So it's taking my literal performance. And because I'm not a robot, I wasn't playing dead on the beat. So a lot of the time, it's irregular length notes like this one here, or I started just ahead or behind the beat. Now the default is 16 and 24, and that tends to work. But I can already see here that it's not working. And I know that this doesn't have anything faster than the quaver in it. So I can actually just go to eight, and now I know this is spot on. So experiment with the quantize function. By default, interpretation is also on. And if I turn that off, you can see how it turns these two notes here into shorter quavers rather than crotchets. And what interpretation does is it uses Logic's kind of brains to say, well, actually, it's more likely in the real world that you would want the performer to actually hold those notes for a whole beat, not for half a beat. So I can turn interpretation on and then it does that. And similarly, if you were playing really staccato with interpretation, it would register that as slightly longer notes and then you might just want to add a staccato marking, for example. But we can actually double click these. And now in the note attributes window, we can see an interpretation. And we can actually say force, which forces it or defeat and that will remove it. But for this, we're just gonna go to default, which is gonna to resort to this. So if you have a score where you only want to force note interpretation on a few notes that have done it wrong, you can turn it off here, and then I can just highlight these, and change their interpretation to force, actually. And same with this one. And there we go. So now if you have a listen, you'll notice that this pretty much matches perfectly. It's really simple melody, but now we've got perfect notation that we could hand to someone else and they'd be able to play this straight away. So all we'd have to do now is add our kind of dynamic markings, ornaments, that kind of stuff, make a piano, and then we could add maybe forte to one of these notes, and we could add a crescendo, like so, and go in and finish it off. But the large bulk of it, which is adding in all these notes and getting the timing and the pitch correct is already done for you. So it's really easy to transcribe MIDI performances into notation using Logic. Using Logic, we can also create guitar notation and move between different styles of notation by going to the style dropdown box in the region window. So if I go to guitar now, it will actually change it to tab for me, which is really handy. And then if you wanted to turn this into a stereotypical tab, you could highlight all of these, go to functions, note attributes, and then stems, we can hide. And now we've got a guitar tab. There are a few other styles, like defaulting to certain instruments, for example, bass, and then it's gonna give us just a, a bass clef. Piano, of course, gives us the right hand and the left hand. We can then go to certain horns, like E flat horns, and it will transcribe it for us. Viola, and it will just automatically transcribe it. So make sure you use that style box to find the appropriate instrument. 
In this lesson, you'll learn about creating score sets so that you can print entire scores for, say, an orchestra or an ensemble. Because a lot of the time, you won't be just printing or composing for one instrument, you'll be printing and composing for many. So here, I've just added another part. We've now got a string part as well as the piano part. Now, the one that you have selected will dictate what you're editing in the score editor. So if I select the string ensemble and go to my screen set, I'm now editing the screen string ensemble. Or if I select the piano and go there, I'm now editing the piano. So how do we get them both to be on the same screen? Because when I've got nothing selected, I can see both, but that's a bit of a pain constantly going between the track view and selecting the one you want and then going here. So what we can use instead is score sets. So if you either go to layout, show score sets, or you can go to this drop down box up here under filter and go show score sets window. And what we can do here is add score sets and we can make score sets of the complete score, the whole ensemble, or we can do individual ones. So if we go to a new complete set, it will automatically add everything in the project. So we can see we've automatically got the piano and the ensemble. And we can change this to a whole ensemble. Now what we can also do is add a new empty set and then I can add instruments. And it, you can see here it's added the piano. So now I can call that piano and I could do the same. But this time I could change it to the string ensemble like so. And I can call that strings. So now we've got these different score sets. So now I can easily navigate between my different sets using this filter. And you can just go between the instruments themselves and then you can go to all instruments. But I can now use my screen sets like whole ensemble and I've got it all here. Now the cool thing about screen sets is that you can change the settings and display settings individually. So I can go to this and I can change the scale, for example, to 50%. And now you can see it's changed the scale there, which you can't do without screen sets. If I just go to all instruments, it's going to keep our scale. Whereas now whole ensemble, especially if I had a few more instruments, I want to keep this to a smaller scale. So score sets are really handy to use when you come to printing and organizing your final score. And then if you want to print anything, you just go to file print or command P. You can print this off or I could go to strings and print this off, etc.